Right now, I'm going to show you how to change the lighting inside a photograph. We're going to take this photo here and then we're going to relight it so that light from the laptop is illuminating her. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today we're going to continue our series of lighting photos in Photoshop and we're going to have a look at this photo here and what we're going to do is take advantage of what's known as practical light. Practical light is where the light would come from an actual light in the scene or something like a laptop. So we're going to change this into more of an evening kind of a setting and we're going to illuminate her with the light coming from this laptop. So let's go ahead and do that. Today we're going to be using the camera raw filter. So if you're doing this inside of Lightroom, it's going to work absolutely identical. All right, so what we're going to do though, so we can make changes is we're going to right click and we're going to convert this to a smart object. And that just gives us the flexibility of working non-destructively. Okay, let's launch the filter. So we're going to go up under filter and we're going down a camera raw filter. Now, if you're using Photoshop CS6, you can still do this, but what you need to do is you need to launch it from bridge rather than trying to do it as a filter because this was added in Photoshop CC. So click camera raw filter and here's our photo. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of using this tool here, which is our radio filter. You'll see it up the top there. And what we want to do is we are going to just kind of drop this into the photo. Let's drop it right now onto that lamp there. So we're going to click on there. And when I say drop it, we drag to form it. And then we can just kind of rotate it like that. See what we're doing there? Just go outside. We can rotate, drag those points to reposition or just drag inside. So we're just going to make it around about the shape of this light. By the way, I grabbed this photo from Adobe Stock. And uh, I'll give you a link to that so you can uh, find it there and work with it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go down here and just reset everything first. So let's just choose reset local color. And that just means we're going to be working on the same page right now. So you'll notice it looks very similar to the adjustments. You'll see these pluses and minus there though instead. And it looks just a little different. So the adjustments work identical. But because we're working with this radio here, you can see it selected. You'll see at the top it says radio filter. So it works the same as any adjustment, but it's really going to be controlled by this point. So we have two options here. We can choose to affect the inside or we can choose to affect the outside. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if we turn the exposure all the way down, notice it's darkened the inside of that oval. But we don't want to do that. We want to do the outside of the oval. So we're going to go down and click on the effect and choose outside. And there we go. So we can see, obviously, we've made it very, very dark. So it's darkening the rest of the photo. Now, I want this to kind of just fall off a little bit more. And so we can do that with the feather. So what we're going to do is increase the feather and that softens the edges. You're not going to see a lot, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger now. There we go. And that's just going to give a smoother transition. OK, so why don't we play around here? and kind of set how we want the scene to look outside of this oval. So let's choose our exposure and we're just going to bring it up a little bit. So we don't want it completely dark, but I'm thinking about here is looking kind of nice. And another feature that's going to happen uh, when you're working on a night scene, maybe there's moonlight or something coming through here. The temperature is going to be a little cooler. So we're going to push it to the left, put it a little more into the blues. See that? And it just starts to give it that kind of nighttime feel. So what we've essentially done is we've converted day to night and we've just used this point here. Now, if you don't have an area there that you want to apply a practical light, you can just drag this in or just start it outside the scene. So you don't even have to have this oval inside the photo at all. But in this case, you know, we've got a, a light there, so we can just kind of drop it there. So as you can see there, it doesn't really matter. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create another oval, and this time we're going to use it to create a beam of light that's going to go onto our woman here. Okay, so what we want to do is we're still in the radio filter, and rather than using edit, now we're going to click on new. 
And this is going to enable us to create, you guessed it, a new one. So we're just going to click and drag, and this one is going to be very much like the other one. So you're not going to see much happening because what it does is it picks up the settings from the previous uh, time we used it. So we want to change this. This time we want the light to work on the inside, not the outside. So under radio filter, go all the way to the bottom and change it to inside. All right, great. So now this is just going to affect inside the circle. So why don't we reset everything again? So where it says radio filter, grab that and just choose reset. Okay, so now this should be neutral. See, it's not doing anything. And of course, we want it to illuminate. So why don't we turn the exposure up a little bit so we can just brighten things up. And we'll just start with it here. Notice if I move this around, it looks like we're now moving a spotlight through the scene. Look at that. But what we want to do is we want this light to come from the laptop coming up here. So I'm going to position the center point near the screen and we'll probably move that later. And we're going to elongate it by dragging on that point. So we're creating an oval and I'm just going to pull it out. Now we want the angle coming up from the laptop. If you are on the inside of the oval, you're repositioning. If you click on these points, you're changing the shape. And if you are outside, it will rotate. So let's go for a rotation here. And we're going to go there. And I want to make it wider because that screen is a little bit wider than that. And let's pull it back. So notice what's happening now is this light is coming up from the laptop. Okay, let's have a look at what the feather does. If I take this feather all the way down, notice what's happening. It's a very, very harsh edge. So what we want to do is we want to just find the edge how we want it. And so what we want to do is we're going to feather it. But if we feather it, notice we can see it pretty good. But this line is a little distracting or that oval. So why don't we hide the oval by just going down here where it says overlay, turn off overlay. And now we can see there's our oval and now we can play around with our feather. Look at that. And now we can see what's happening. So I'm thinking about there is going to work quite nicely. And I'm looking at things like how's that hitting her knee? How's it hitting these areas? And that's looking quite nice. Now let's turn the overlay back on because what we're going to do is we're going to change the angle a little bit because I want it to hit her face. Because usually if there's a person in the photograph, generally speaking, that person's face is the most important thing in that photo. So let's increase that spread a little bit and we're going to pull it down. So there we go. So it's kind of hitting her face, but her forehead's in shadow. I kind of like that. That's great. Okay, so we've applied that now. Let's just hit the overlay once again and we can have a look. This is looking good, but there's an adjustment that we need to make. I don't think this light would be appearing behind her right there. So what we're going to do is I'll turn the overlay on just so you can see. We need to get rid of that. So what we need to do is brush it out. Now, one of the nice things about working with the radio filter is that we have the option to brush. So we're going to click on this brush and now this brush will either add or take away. So this is adjusting it on the inside, so we want to take it away. So let's hit the minus brush, brush here. And I'm going to bring that feather down a little bit so it's not quite so wide. And let's increase the size. Now let's see what happens. That's a little big. Now here's a tip. If you use your left bracket key, you can make it smaller. Right bracket key will make it bigger. So a lot of the time I'll put my hand on the keyboard as I'm doing this. Okay, now let's paint in here. And notice what we're doing here now is we're painting away that area behind her because we don't want it to be affecting there because that would be in shadow. Okay, now if you don't want that shadow adjustment to work as quickly as it did there, you can change that flow. If you lower the flow, it's going to work a little bit slower. So why don't we do that and just kind of work in a little bit closer to her hair as well. And we're working with a lower flow right now. Great. Now I'm going to take this flow down very, very low. And I'm thinking about, okay, some of these areas are hitting, getting light, but they should be more in shadow. Um, if you imagine the lights coming from the laptop, one of the things is, you know, the guitar itself here, there would be a little shadow under there. So notice what I'm doing. I'm not painting the shadow. All I'm doing is painting away the adjustments, which brightens it. And it just makes the shadow appear because its natural form is darker. 
So we're essentially just removing the light from that area. And of course that gives us shadow. So we can do that and maybe the other side of our leg a little, just grab it there because that light will be hitting the forward facing areas. Now you can get really crazy with this. Um, you could start to shape the hand and do a lot of different things. We're not going to get too involved with it because we can always, um, you know, do this later yourself. So I'm just going to add a little shadow on the edge here. And what this is doing is it's just making that light look a little more realistic. And I'm actually going to hit the side of the hair there a bit more because it's a little more realistic. Thinking at the shadows here, the lights coming up here. And let's just go there. I'm just going to just kind of fill it in maybe a little more into the chin area because that hair there would be maybe shielding a little bit of light coming in there. Okay, so we're starting to get there. Let's do a little bit more out of the background. I'm just going to kind of drop that a little bit. That background might get a little light, might receive a little bit, not a whole ton. So let's just kind of drop that down. All right, so if we look at what we're doing right now, and I hit the before key and the after key, you can see it's really starting to happen. Now, one of the things we need to do, though, is see the laptop. The back of this laptop will not be receiving light because <laughs> the light is going from the other side of it. So notice as I hit those keys, it went away. So what we need to do is, first of all, we need to select our area that we're going to work with. And we can do that. Notice there's one oval. There's the other oval. And as you roll over, it shows the mask. So we can tap on it. And now I want to paint this out. So let's go back to our brush. Okay, so we're going to hit the minus on our brush. Let's bring the flow up a little bit. Let's bring it up to about 50. And one of the things you'll notice too is this auto mask. If you turn the auto mask on, it will detect the edges and it'll make it easier to paint. So let's just kind of paint in there. Notice it's just painting nice and strong because it's seeing those edges. All right, and let's paint down the bottom there, and we're just painting all this back. Now, if it looks a little weird like this, just turn off the auto mask. Let's drop that flow down significantly, and we can just kind of fix this, just painting in here a little bit. And that's actually part of the original photo with that focus. See what's happening there? We're just painting those shadows back in there. And let's just go on there. Same thing with that edge. Let's just clean up that edge a little bit. And I'm doing this separately so we don't get a halo or a kind of a doubling effect. Because see how with it being out of focus there, that bokeh is kind of bleeding into it. So you just want to be kind of careful there that we're not getting a little too unrealistic. So that works great. Okay, so let's click on any other tool, the hand tool, for example, and we can see what we've done so far. So if I look at this before and after, we can hit the P key. There's before. And there's after, okay, so we're definitely starting to create this effect of some light. But I feel like there's some areas I'd like to put just a little bit more light. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint this by hand. So grab our adjustment brush right here. And then we're going to reset everything here. Let's just reset it. And then with our adjustment brush, all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the exposure a little bit. And let's scroll down here. Look at the settings. We're going to turn the auto mask off. I'm going to keep that flow quite low. Let's put the density to about 50. And what the density does is it will set the maximum. So I can't go any lighter than 50% if I apply this. Uh, let's turn the flow up a little bit and let's bring that feather around about the middle. All right, great. So now we're going to find this. And I might even go a little bit higher. Let's go up here and maybe even put this exposure a little bit brighter. And let's just test it and see where we're at right now with that. So if I'm painting with that, that's what it's lighting. Okay, that's pretty good. Obviously it was a little too much, but let's go down here. And I just wanna light up the fretboard a little bit more on her guitar. There we go. So that light is just kind of hitting it here and maybe a little bit here. We're just kind of brightening it a little, see that? And particularly the metal areas where it would be reflecting, it would definitely be bright there down by the toggle switches, things like that. So we've just given that a little bit more light there. And I'm also gonna just give her a little bit here on her hand, just kind of just give that a little touch. 
And see what we're doing now? We're just adding a little light. Just kind of where it would be coming out of here, maybe a little bit more in the front of her leg because that's a very bright area receiving a lot of light. So what we're doing now is we're painting with lights. So we've set our overall light and now we're just doing a little bit, you know, just little touches here and there. This hand would be very bright because it would be receiving a lot of light because it's the closest to that screen. So we're able to do that okay. I'm not going to do much with her face there. I'm just, I think that's fine. And maybe just a little bit on her arm there might be just getting a little bit of that light coming through. Great. And maybe just a touch here. Now you can go through and really start to go crazy with this and really start to add a lot of light in different places. And um, the more you do that, obviously the better result you're going to start having what we're doing. And now we're just going to click OK to apply it. But before we do, why don't we have a look once again, let's do our before and after. So we're going to hit the P as before and there's after. So let's just click OK. But before I click OK, there's one other thing we could do if we wanted uh, would be to warm it up a little bit. So why don't we just apply this to the whole photo? So we're just clicking on the hand here and we're going to warm up the whole photo, just like, you know, it's a warmer light coming out of that laptop. Or, you know, it could even be different colors. You know, it could be blue. It could be, you know, pink. We could have all kinds of colors coming out of there. But what we're going to do is just give it a little warmth. Now, when we do that, it does warm up the background. So let's go back to the background and cool it again. So we're going to click on the radio filter. Remember, this is where we were. Click here. And now we can bring this down more into the blue and see what that's doing. So this enabled us to warm up all the bright areas all at once. And we could compensate by going back and setting this blue in the background again. And this gives us before and after. So now she's illuminated from the light coming out of the laptop screen. OK, so we're just going to click OK to apply. And it's going to apply it. And there we go. Now, because we're working with that smart object, this is a smart filter. So we can turn it off or we can turn it on. And if you feel like the effect is too strong, see this little icon here? Click on there. Or should I say double click on there? And this will bring up the blending options. Now with the blending options, you can use the opacity to dial in exactly how much of that raw filter you want. So if we dial it all the way down, this has no effect. As we dial it up, we can start to apply that effect. So if you feel like, wow, it's a little strong, let's just wind it back a little bit. See how you can do that. So anyway, I know we've been doing a lot of these tutorials with these lighting effects, some of them using the lighting effects filter and the last weeks and this week we're starting to use the one inside of Camera Raw. So there's a lot of different ways that we can illuminate and we can light photographs and as you can see you can make a really dramatic change you can take a photo which is kind of blah and then just add that fizz to it so i hope you found this useful um, and if you've learned anything new or you found it useful let me know in the comments underneath what you think about this so anyway guys thanks for watching also don't forget we're doing our beginners tutorials just at our second one this week on layer masks so the first one was on layers this one was on layer masks so each weekend now i'm releasing a beginner's tutorial. Every Tuesday I'm doing a regular tutorial and every Thursday we're doing a live stream. And if you want to know when all this happens, hit the subscribe button right now and turn on all notifications and then you'll know whenever I upload these new videos. So anyway guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.